All right, good morning. Good to have you all here to honor Linda. We are here to celebrate the life and remember Linda Adams. I'm Pastor John Meadows. I'm the pastor that pastors this church. And uh, I appreciate you all being here. And uh, we're, uh, we're going to give you all a chance at the end to uh, speak on her and, and uh, anything you want to share. Uh, we'll give you more information on that. But I'm really thrilled, and uh, something I'm, I've known about Linda, I didn't, I didn't know about Linda, but I knew her all my life. She was enlisted in the Marines. So, wow. I wish I would have got to talk to her about that. So, uh, the, the military is here, more specifically, the Marines are here to honor the Marine, a fellow Marine. So, Sergeant, with your man, please come and honor a fellow Marine.
United States, the United States Marine Corps, in your great formation. Please accept this flag to some more gratitude for your once honorable. Well, let's thank them for being here. Appreciate your service. All right, I'm now going to read the obituary with the microphone on. All right. Linda S. Adams, age 70, of Launton, Kansas, passed away Thursday, October 31st, in the year 2024, at her home. Linda Sue Adams was born in Wichita, Kansas on September 5th, 1954, to Samuel H. and Pats Hayes, Patsy Hayes. Linda was later adopted by Julia Blankenship and Alfred McKenzie. She graduated from Campus High School in Hayesville, Kansas in 1972. Linda enlisted in the U.S. Marine Corps and was honorably discharged in 1973. That year, she married William Ray Lupton. They were later divorced. The family moved to Texas, Germany, and Tacoma, Washington, before moving back to Hayesville. She married Boy Ray Adams in the year 2020, and Mr. Adams passed away in the year 2022. Linda was a homemaker that loved her dog, family, and grandkids. Survivors of Linda Adam include her son Jason and his wife uh, Leanne Lupton of Launton, Kansas, siblings Samuel H. Hayes, Kathy Southworth, and Sonia Wilson. Four grandchildren, Elizabeth and her husband Jared Adir. All right, wherever they are. I kept saying it wrong earlier. Um, Andy and Brittany Lupton, Rosalie and, Zach, and her husband Zachary Rice, and Samantha Lupton. Two great-grandchildren, Isabella and Michael, and of course all of us extended family and friends. Linda was preceded in death by her parents, husband Boyd, and siblings Sandy and Don Shepard. At this time, we're going to play the song Days of Elijah by Rob, Robin Mark. And uh, for those on the video, I can't put it on the video, but since you're on YouTube, go find the song and relive the service. At this time, I'm going to invite the family. And family, if you're not feeling it, just let me know. The memories I have, I'll, I'll read them up here. Uh, but I'm going to let the family come uh, one at a time and share. Um, Jason, would you like to start? Sure. All right. Her son, Jason, he's going to start this. <laughs> um, Mom was different, to say the least. She was, when, when God made her mold, he broke it, I'll tell you that. Yeah. She, she, uh, <laughs> I remember a time when uh, we were all out fishing when I was younger with uh, Grandpa McKenzie and Grandma and uh, Kathy and Mike and Dad and Mom didn't think I could cast my own pole so she grabbed my pole from me and said, I'm going to show you how to fish, son. I said, okay. And as soon as she... Uh, tried to cast the pole in, well, she cast her whole self in. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, of course, Grandpa, he wasn't worried about Mom. He wasn't worried about her flip-flops or her glasses. But, boy, he had to get that pole. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, Grandpa, he's, he's reeling in the pole. And then he, he reels in her flip-flops. And the next thing I know, Mike and Dad are carrying Mom out of the, of the uh, water. Uh, spread eagle. Yeah. And then dropped her on the ground. She was panicking, and it took all they had to bring her back out of that water. But you know what? She never cashed in my pole again. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> but she was she was quirky. Uh, she didn't want us to 
You know, today is a day of sadness. You know, really it is. Um, it's been rough. But, the one thing Mom wanted us to do was not worry about where she was at. Amen. And uh, she, she didn't want a funeral. She wanted a home going that was uh, full of celebration of life. Amen. Because she touched many lives. Yes. And so... Uh, I know one of her, <clears throat> excuse me, one of her last wishes was that uh, her unsaved family would get saved. Amen. So, but uh, we've done our best to follow her wishes, so we've done everything we could, and that's yeah. about all I got to say. All right. I appreciate it, Jason. All right. All, right. all right, thank you, Jason. Appreciate that. Andy, would you like to say anything at this time? Okay, that's okay. All right. Elizabeth, you want me to read your what you gave me? All right, I'll, I'm going to read it. All right. All right. I forgot to put this in order, so bear with me. <laughs> okay. All right. Look at the end. Yep, there. All right. This is uh, this is Linda's uh. First granddaughter, Elizabeth. She said, my Nana, she was always the person you could call when you needed to talk about anything. She was my rock. She will always be my rock. She did so much for me. She was always there with my, she was there with me in, in my surgeries, all, all five of them, even, and even if it was a, a person I knew, she was, Okay. Even if it wasn't in, in person, I knew she was there praying for me and pushing me to, to never give up. She always taught me to put God first and pray and to never give up when life got rough. Oh, how I miss her so much. I know she's in a better place, but I will miss her so much. Nana wasn't just my grandmother, she was my best friend, my rock, the one I could count on when life got hard and I could talk to her. She understood me, she understood a lot of people. That was the one thing I'll say about, about my Nana was that she was sweet, loving, a, lo a loving hearted person. I'm so proud to be her oldest granddaughter and she gave me the courage to keep trying to lose weight and to not even give up when I wanted to. Thanks to her encouragement, I have lost 40 pounds in the last years. That's awesome. And it's and I'm still losing. I miss you so much. Love Elizabeth Adair. Adair. All right. All right. Rosie, where is she at? There you are. Did you want to, you want me to read yours or do you want to try it? You want me to read it? Okay. All right. All right, here we go. To Nana, you were my everything and always there for me and you taught me to be so me so much growing up. You taught me how to play the piano and all about Jesus. You helped me through bad times and good times. You were always you always knew how to make me laugh. Even when when I I just wanted to cry, I know you're in a better place, but I miss you more than anything. I hope you are having the time of your life up, up there with Jesus and I know you you're, you are pain free. Your last words to me were not to worry about you and and that you loved us all. You will always you will you will forever be missed by all that knew you. I know that and I know I would do it all over again because I, I loved you more than you could ever know. Thank you for all that you ever did for me and my baby son were the best 
you were the best Nana and and we could ever ask for. Love, Rosie. P.S. Your grandson misses you a lot. Thank you, Rosie. Appreciate that. All right, Samantha. Do you want to read yours? You want me to read it? Okay, I'll read it. All right. It's all right. That's why I'm here. All right, this is from Samantha. This is the youngest granddaughter. All right. My Nana could be stubborn at times, but like the saying goes, she had a, a heart of gold. She would spoil her grandkids and great-grandkids whenever she got the chance. She spoiled me so much, so much, she even uh, had me, she even had my very own red, red cup and matching plate. She made sure that no one would touch it except me. She always supported me in my interest in music and instruments. She let me play the trumpet at her, at her and Gramps' wedding. Whenever the, the kids went over, uh, over to, to her place, she always had something for us to do. She taught me how to sew and do cross stitching. She would also uh, keep, she would also keep almost everything we gave her. When I was over, when I went over to her apartment place, we would, we would walk to the, to the bush and, and th that had a whole lot of, a whole bunch of beautiful birds. The birds would whistle and she would whistle back. She always could talk. I knew that I could always talk to her about, about anything. She would often, we would often eat ice cream and talk. Anyways, if you knew us, we had a, we had a saying, we would say, anytime one of us left to go somewhere, we would say, I love you more than whatever you can say. So Nana, so Nana said, I love you more than whatever you can say till I see you again. There it is. So Nana, let me read that right. So Nana, this is what she said. I love you more than whatever you can say till I see you again. Very nice. Sincerely, your favorite granddaughter. <laughs> grandchild. She wasn't being Pacific. She said grandchild. Samantha Lupton. Thank you, hon. I appreciate that. All right. At this time, there's a song that Linda loved. and We're going to play it. And it's a song called The Truth I'm Standing On by Leanne Crawford. Well, this morning... I thought I'd read this passage in John 11, and I just want to let everyone know. In times like this, we say a lot of good and true things to each other. And, you know, when you're a family member and, you, and the beloved has is, is left this world, the family always appreciates it, you know, and they, and they appreciate the, the, the truth and, and, and the kind words that you say. But sometimes those words just are not touching you where you need to be touched. And um, I just want to invite you to let the Word of God touch you, because it has a way of doing that. It can reach deep down inside to where you just, you just need that comfort. And the Holy Spirit is right there to uh, confirm His Word. Can I get an amen from the church? Amen. 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 This is a special passage that I, I love reading in times like this, and I always use it for a lady who was a servant of God. This is uh, John 11, it is verses 24 through 27. It's a story about Martha, and she's not really happy with Jesus because her brother just died. And it picks up, Martha said to him, Martha said to him, I know that he will rise in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is to come into the world. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for your word, and I thank you, Lord, that you came into this world 
to save every one of us. And Lord, we thank you that you came and you showed us the love of God. You showed us who you are. You showed us who the Father is. And Lord, I thank you that you went to that cross and you paid for our sins with your own blood. And I thank you, Lord, that we have atonement in that message. And Lord, I ask right now that your word will go forth. And we thank you, Lord, your word does not return void. And we ask, Lord, that your word will minister to all of us in this moment that we're in. And we give you the praise, glory, and honor. And Holy Spirit, we thank you that you're here. You're the one who breathed out this word. I ask that you speak now as I go through this. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So back to Martha. If you go to 23, Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. And then she says to him, I know that he'll rise in the resurrection at the last day. So you see here that Martha had faith. She had faith. But she, she didn't understand what was going on. And her and her sister, if you read the whole passage, didn't know why he delayed and why her brother had to pass away and why did he have to be, why did it have to be the fourth day for, for, for Jesus to finally show up? It's because Jesus was being led by the Father. He knew what he was doing. Amen. Now here's the company words he says to her. Jesus says to her, I am the resurrection. You know what that means? Say amen. 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 I am the resurrection and the life. See, a chapter before that, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He is all that. He has the life for us. He is the truth for us to know. And when we die, back in John 3, 16, we, whoever so, whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. He is the life. Amen. He who, and then he says, he who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. So back to John three sixteen. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe, believe you believe it. You believe the message, amen? amen? And when you believe that message, you will never die. That's what the word says. You shall never die. I believe when you're in this world and you know Jesus, as soon as you shut your eyes and your body stops, you open your eyes right back up and you're right there with Jesus. And it says that we're surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, so you're there with everyone you know that went before you. And you're, you're there. Praise God. And the way Paul talks about it is, you know, uh, you know, uh, to, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. I believe you're conscious. You know exactly where you're at. You know exactly where you're at. And now you're with a great cloud of witnesses cheering us on. Amen? Amen. Not only Jesus is cheering you on to do this life right, everyone else is too. Now this part I always like to point out. Jesus repeats himself. So in case you didn't catch this, this is where the Bible repeats itself. And when I was young, my dad would say, John, when the Bible repeats itself, it's saying, pay attention. He's going to say the truth again. Whosoever lives and believes in me shall never die. And then he asks a really good question, and that's my question to all of us here today. Do you believe this? Of course, she says a really good response. I'll break it down for you here in a second. But yes, do you believe that Jesus came and paid for you on the cross? Do you believe it? Yes. If you do, you are saved. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. You call on the name of Jesus Christ to save you, you shall be saved. That's the promise in the Bible. Amen? I love her response. She says to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ. Boom. <laughs> the Son of God. Double boom. She got it. Who is to come into the world. So she had faith. Even though she was like the rest of us right now. She has faith. She believes. She may not understand why. She doesn't understand what's going on. But she believes. And he goes and says, "You're gonna." He goes on to tell her, "You're gonna see something." And then he meets up with the meet up with the sister. And for those who know John 11, what happens? They go to the tomb, and Jesus shows that He is the one who's over death. He is the God of life. 
Amen. He raises Lazarus from the dead. So if you're here this morning and you don't know Jesus, I just want to invite you to, to uh, pray and ask him to forgive you of your sins. Accept that sacrifice that he did for you on the cross. And then ask the Holy Spirit to come into your life and to lead you. And if you do that, you shall be saved. How about we all pray that? Sound good? Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for sending Jesus into this world. And Lord, I thank you that you went to that cross. And you, play, you paid for my sins with your blood. Forgive me of the sins that I have committed. And I ask your Holy Spirit to come into my life. And help me lead a life of righteousness. I thank you for who you are, Lord. And I give you the praise and the glory and the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. If you prayed that and you meant it, you're in. And um, after this, we're going to have a dinner. And if you want to pull me aside and talk to me, I'll talk to you. I'll help you out. And I have no problems doing that because, one, that's what I do. And two, I know Linda wanted this. And three, the family told me to do it. So, <laughs> so we want you to make it where she's at. Amen? Amen. The cool thing about Linda was she loved God. She served in this church back when it was a garage. <laughs> this is where I parked my two old Dodges. It's still, still the parsonage. She played the piano. She also taught Sunday school. And she even served her country. And she was like Martha. She was a servant. Martha had to get rebuked because she got too wrapped up in her service, but Jesus helped her out. Amen? Amen. So I know where Linda's at, and I know I'm going to see her again. She's up there with my father and my uncles. A lot of people I know here at this church that are here, that were here, that are all up there. And I tell you what, the older you get, the more you met, you just long for heaven because you know more people up there than you do down here. But you know what? That day's coming. We're all going to be together, and that's the promise in the Word. Amen? Amen. 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 So at this time, I'm going to invite anyone who would like to uh, share just for a minute or two a story or something you have uh, a memory or if you just have something positive just to say to the, to, to, the, to the whole congregation, the family here that will honor Linda, I'm portable. I got a portable mic so I can come right to you. You can stand, you can sit, you can do whatever you want. Um, you will be on the, your voice will be on the video. So uh, when people listen to this, they can, they, can, uh, they can hear it. If you want to come up here and stand, I'll even let you do that if you want to. So. Is there anyone here who would like to start and uh, share a, a, a memory of, of, of Linda? And You want to? Sonia? Okay. All right. Her sister. All right. <coughs> Let everyone know who you are. Go ahead and share. I'm Sonia. I'm yeah. Linda's little sister. And if it wasn't for Linda, my childhood would not have been what it was. From the moment I opened my eyes, my sister was there, and she was fun. She was the essence of fun. That's all she ever was. And we had these little games we played. And I loved to go down the hallway. And when I was little, it seemed really long, you know. So I'd take a running start, and I'd get to the hallway, and I'd plant my feet, and I'd dive on her bed. And Linda didn't like it. <laughs> so she moved the bed. <laughs> she didn't tell me she moved the bed, but she did. And when I went to dive, I landed on the floor. And even though she was laughing, the minute she saw I was crying, she gathered me up in her arms and she sang to me. And that was Linda. She was always there, always fun. We had an old, nasty, nasty mattress Dad had thrown out in the backyard. He was nasty. Yeah. <laughs> and she would say to me, wrestle me. And she wanted to wrestle on that mattress. Well, I didn't want any part of it, you know. 
And every time I wrestled her, she beat me up. So I would say, I don't want to wrestle. Wrestle me or I'll beat you up. <laughs> Either way, I was going to get beat up. But she never did. She never beat me up. She just played with me, and she made life so fun. And when I was staying with her before I came to Kathy, um, we talked a lot about her going home. And Linda told me, she said, I'll see you again. I'll see you there. And I know that I will. I will see her again. And until then, we'll just remember all the fun she brought to all our lives and the way she touched us. And I want to say to her family, if there was ever a family that was loved, it was you guys. She loved you with all her. Thank you, Sonia. I appreciate that. Kathy? Okay, Kathy. All right. All right, just, yeah, just let us know who you are. Hi, I'm Kathy. I'm the middle. Linda's older, Sonia's younger. But when we were kids, Linda liked to play Let's Make a Deal. And let me tell you, this is Linda we're talking about. And Sonia and I were kind of afraid to sometimes play this with her because <laughs> her song prizes were pretty bad. Yeah. You know, the good prizes were good, yeah. but when you opened a zonk, you got the stinkiest tennis shoe you've ever smelled in your whole <laughs> life. It was horrible. Yeah. <laughs> but she was like that. She was always fun. And, you know... She was my sister for 65 years. And mom told me a story that when I was born, mom asked her, she wanted a little sister. And, and she said, only if I can name her. So Linda named me Kathy. Nice. That's where I got my name. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Thank you, Kathy. I appreciate it. Thank you, Kathy. That was great. Would anyone else at this time like to share? Bill? I'm Bill Lupton, and I was Linda's first husband. Okay. I was Linda's first husband, uh, and uh, we got married in November 10th of 1973. I, I came home on leave from Korea, and Pastor John's dad, David's the one who officiated our wedding. And then uh, John's grandmother was pastor in the West Church at the time, and she told Linda that the church parsonage nobody was living in, so Linda and I could stay stay there while I was home on leave. So we stayed there, and while I was home, I made arrangements with my old job before I got drafted uh, to uh, work while I was home. And one evening, when I got off, got home, pulled in the driveway, got out of the car, and I could hear Linda screaming her head off. I walk in the house, she's on a kitchen chair, pointing down the floor, and the poor little mouse, her scream just <laughs> <laughs> knocked him dead. Yes. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And there's another time when I came home from uh, Fort Hood, Texas on a weekend and we was in her parents' backyard and she reminded me how big bad marine she was yeah. and she tried to flip me over her shoulder. Well, when that happened, I went down on top of one of her ankles and sprung it. <laughs> yeah. All right, thank you, Bill. Appreciate that. Would anyone else like to share at this time? Yep. There you go. My name is Kevin Duncan. I've been going to this church since 1976 when I got saved. And uh, in a little garage church in Hayesville. I am uh, currently the worship leader of our church. And I wrote this down because I was going to 
uh, bring this up tomorrow at the congregation. So I'm going to let some of you know about Linda's influence on our church. Uh, she had a unique influence on people, as we heard of testimony. What you may not know, she influenced one aspect of our worship time. She could not see the words up on the screen. As before we had these monitors, they were projected up there, so they were very hard to see. Uh, and then when we turned to these monitors, they were all fancy with the different colors and fading in and the flowers and the scenery going by and different uh, colors, blue, green, yellow, whatever screens. And she couldn't see the, all the words because uh, sometimes it's pretty cluttered up in with all, you know, in the sceneries. And uh, so we reformatted. My wife and I went through all the worship, uh, you know, the, 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 the PowerPoint. Sorry. And uh, so we made them user friendly. We made the fonts at forty five big we made it all times Roman and it, and black and white and then with black and white she could see them good so a lot of the congregation doesn't know that's why we got kind of cleaned up our, our PowerPoint so it was a good influence thank you Kevin appreciate that yeah all right let everyone know who you are Go ahead, sure. I'm Linda Sue Linda Sue's best friend <laughs> um, I met Linda in Hayesville Church and we hit it off like crazy and we were best friends for 59 years that's a long time she was my only friend and I loved her dearly and I miss her but I know where she's at so that's it thank you Linda I appreciate that Linda yes yes sir let everyone know who you are. Uh, I'm David Rouse. I'm going to come up here because I know <laughs> a lot of us don't have rubber necks. Anybody here have a rubber neck? <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, <clears throat> um, that's a good thing. The big was manufactured from B.F. Goodrich. And, uh, you know, we live in a sinful world full of sadness and uh uh, you know, with us being down here, you know, God, He wants us to be happy too, have laughter in our lives. And uh, I'm gonna tell you something here that I really feel that uh, Linda would want us want me to tell you, because she got a good laugh out of it, and I'm sure she'd be hope that you get laughed too. <clears throat> I met Bill, I'd say back in the late '70s. That's how I got acquainted with him and Linda and Jason. And uh, there's a time they was getting ready to move to uh, Viola, Kansas. And so I think Bill and I was over at the house there in Viola, Major to Conway Springs. Oh, Conway Springs. Okay, thank you for correcting me. And uh, we was measuring the doorways. And we figured the best way to get the refrigerator in is the back door is a little bit wider. Still had to remove the door, but in the process, I got my finger caught between the jam and the refrigerator, and kind of smashed it pretty good. I don't remember if it was a cut or what, but I know it split because it hit so hard, you know. And there was just very little blood coming out, very little. Linda was, oh, no, I can't, you know, let's get something done with that. And she was, well, me and Sam was in the process of moving. They had things packed up. So she wrapped this deal around my finger, and I was looking at it. And I didn't identify it. I, I didn't know what it was. Well, she sent us to the store to get things to make sandwiches. At the register, this lady she was looking down at my finger, and she looked at me, kind of, you know, kind of puzzled look on her face, and I didn't think too much of it. I just thought, I wonder why she's looking at me like that for. Well, we got back. Linda was laughing. She finally told me what that was. 
It was a film of napkin. <laughs> that explained why that lady was looking at me so strange. <laughs> Thank you, Dave. Wow. All right. All right. Would anyone else like to share at this time? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You can do whatever you want, Jason. Here you go. Yeah. Y'all know me. I'm Jason Emerson. <laughs> Uh, back to Linda Suter there. They were, you know, partners in crime. Uh, I remember, I don't even think it was Halloween, but they dressed up in these, these coveralls and they put hangers in their hair that was braided to look like Pippi Longstocking and they would walk down Douglas just waving at people. So, <laughs> you don't remember that? But yeah, uh, she, she had a fun streak, and uh, not only that, but in high school, she liked to embarrass me. Uh, we had just got done with our physical education class, and her and my Aunt Kathy decided to dress as clowns and come into the boys' locker room. <laughs> so, if that gives you any idea of what her sense of humor was like, a little bit twisted, but a lot of fun. So... <laughs> There you go. Right. Thank you, Jason. Appreciate that. All right. Yes, sir. I'll come right back. All right. Let us know who you are. Go ahead and share. Hello, everybody. I'm Jason LaBridge. I'm one of Jason Lupton's best friends. And um, many years ago, uh, when I went to high school, I was a freshman. And Jason Lupton and I ended up in driver's ed together. Um, God knew what he's doing bringing us together. And <laughs> he's still so uh, a little sour about getting a lower grade than me. But, <laughs> but uh, I came to meet his mother later, and uh, she was full of life. She is a wonderful woman, and... She, uh, you know, loved to crack jokes. I, I don't think I had to go see a comedy show. I had her. She, <laughs> she was always picking on her sister or whoever, just making fun of people. But um, she was a wonderful woman, and she'll be missed. Um, we'll thank God that she's, you know, in heaven with him and... Uh, you know, I love you, Jason, and I'll miss your mom. She's a great woman. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. All right, here you go. All right. Let know who you are. I'm Jeremy Dare. I'm Nana's grandson and all. Um, when Nana was living in her apartment and in Hazelville, Kansas, um, when me and Liz were living in her apartment at the time, and we were going up to visit her one time, <clears throat> we were getting ready to leave, and she was coming down to visit at the last bit of the time. Mm -hmm. And she was saying that she was going to race us out of the parking lot with her power chair. Mm -hmm. And... I was like, Nana, you're not going to outran us with a power chair? Because we're going to run over you more than you're going to outran us. Very good. Thank you, Jared. Appreciate that. Thank you. All right. Anyone else like to share at this time? All right. All right. Very good. Very good. Sure, I didn't miss anyone. All right. All right. A couple of memories I had of her was um, last couple of years when her and Boyd were together, they would come in and they would sit right there on that second row. And they would sit there and, and uh, catch, the, catch the Bible studies on Wednesday nights and, and Sunday nights. And I just had all sorts of wonderful memories with them. And um, 
I, I do have to say this before I turn it over to our our friends, the Anderson family, to uh, sing sing a, a song for us. I would see her all the time around town in Hayesville, and she had her little doggie She's here with us. And uh, and uh, every time I saw her, I was like, who, who is that? I'm like, oh, it's Linda. <laughs> Well, we had a guy who, who uh, came to our church for a while, and he was the manager uh, right across the way at McDonald's. And since, since we've talked about her honoriness, I, I thought I'll go ahead and share this one. He had to go out and talk to Linda a couple times in the drive-thru that she cannot operate her scooter through the drive-thru. <laughs> that, is, that is not a, a, a motor vehicle for what the drive through is intended for. So, um, there was liability and insurance problems there. So, um, so anyways, I thought I'd share that with you. I thought that was pretty funny. So, anyways, we're, we're going we're gonna to have a lot of funny things to talk to her about when we get to heaven. So, so at this time, uh, Anderson, if you've got Anderson family, if you guys want to go ahead and come up. And, and I'm really glad that they're here. Um, I had them on a rotation where every uh, November they would come and sing, and I loved it because they would just get us prepared for the holidays. And uh, this is a song that they always close out with is and when they when they would uh, when they would perform, and it's "I've Been Blessed." So, you guys, go ahead and come on up here. We'll get you situated. Here, uh, we'll begin. But I just wanted to uh, share real quick. I never got pranked by Linda. Um, we uh, got the opportunity to visit with her on multiple occasions and every occasion that we had to visit with your mother there's always a smile on her face and if you knew nothing else about Linda you knew that she loved the Lord and she loved her family Amen. loved her family and uh, she her life is reflected in each of you. Yeah. In each of you. Yeah. And she is not the same person that she was here on earth. Um, we all lose family. And that's tragic. This is a home going. All right. Well, at this time, we're going we're gonna to close out in prayer. I'd like to invite everyone over next door. We have a, a lunch prepared for you, and there's plenty of food, so if you weren't prepared for that, please stick around and hang out and uh, continue to talk to the family and share memories. And um, for all those who wanted to say something, I just, I just want to let you know that you got the dinner next door, you got your whole life, you got the time when you're just hanging out with family and it's just a it's just a time to to uh, talk about all the memories and uh, those are good times to share and um, I know some people walk away because they're upset because they they didn't have the strength to speak it's it's all right it's good it just means you loved her and those tears mean that you loved her and um, I just want to let everyone know that there's a, a verse that says that love is stronger than death in the Bible and if you think about it Everything that she instilled in you is who you are today. She changed you. Think about what it would be without knowing her. Think about that. And the Lord Jesus Christ, what did he do? He came down to this earth and he showed us who he was. And now we're all different because we know him. So what, that's what Linda did. She came down here and she showed us the love of God the best way she knew how. And with that, let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you came into this world and you showed us who you are. And Lord, you paid for us on that cross so we can be with you forever. And Lord, your resurrection showed that, the, that it was done and that you have defeated death. And just like you did with Martha, Lord, you showed her that death is defeated by your power. And we thank you, Lord, that you went back to the Father and you're waiting us. And Lord, we thank you that Linda came into this world. And she got to know you and she got to show us what it is to be a woman of God. 
what it was to be a worker at the church, what it was to be a mother, what it was to be a grandmother. And Lord, she even got to show the world what it is to be a great-grandmother loving those kiddos the way you would have anyone love their, their kids and their lineage. Lord, I just ask, Lord, that we will be blessed by, by um, all the good memories we have of her. And Lord, that those will continue to change us and just remind us of the day, that sweet day, we're going to be back with you, Lord. And we're going to be back with her and everyone else we knew. Bless the food to our bodies, bless the fellowship, and, and, and bless the memories, Lord, that continue to be shared next door and, and for the rest of our days here. And we give you praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.